We welcome you to Old Spice College Across on ESPN on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon from Princeton, New Jersey. 60 degrees and sunny as we get ready for lacrosse action here in the rivalry that is Penn and Princeton for the 54th meeting of all time between these two here today from Sherrod Field at Class of 1952 Stadium. Welcome, everyone. Good to have you with us. Mike Corey alongside two-time national champion from Princeton and Tawartan Trophy winner, Rachel DiCecco. Good to be with you. You've played in this game before. You know what it's all about. What's it like now for these two teams and what's at stake for them today? A huge game for both of these teams. Princeton looking to continue to be undefeated. They are second behind Yale and Ivy standings. And then we've got Penn with their first big Ivy win against Brown on Saturday. How about that? They needed that to kind of stay in this race, don't they? A absolutely. Only the top four teams make the Ivy League tournament. So Penn really needs to win the next two games to make the tournament. Princeton on the other side doing really well right now. They are number 12 in the country. 3-0 as you talked about undefeated in the Ivy League. So many players to talk about, but let's begin with Kyla Sears. Kyla Sears, she does a little bit of everything. She scores goals, she assists, she sings the national anthem. Having an incredible final season, Kyla is leading a very young Princeton attack. 35 goals, 19 assists. She leads the Ivy League in goals and points and is the reigning Ivy League Offensive Player of the Week. Look for a big game from Kyla tonight. And we just saw her uh, and heard her sing the National Anthem. Pretty impressive here to get things started tonight at Princeton. Multi-talented Kyla Sears is for sure. All right, Sam Fish is in goal for Princeton, the senior out of San Diego, California. We'll see what she can do here today for her squad to try to have them pick up their ninth win of the season and stay undefeated in the Ivy League. And it's gonna be number 52. Kelly Van Hosen, who's going to be in goal for Penn. They are going back and forth this season, aren't they, between the two goalkeepers? Yeah, the goalies have split time this season, and really they weren't sure going in who was going to get the start here. They went with Van Hosen, who's averaging about 13.5 goals against and a 44% save percentage. All right, getting set for the start of this one here today. You know, and you and I were talking before this game's about to get underway about what the last couple of years have been like, especially in the Ivy League for teams with COVID. I mean, there was no season last year, right? I mean, and then you got 2020 that gets cut short. I mean, it's got to be so disruptive. Yeah, and, the, and both coaches echoed how grateful they are to be back on the field, how grateful their kids are to be back on the field. So this, this game is not lost on either team. Kenan Moon here, the draw control for Penn to get things started, and it's going to be picked up by Maria Themelis. And the Quakers control the opening possession here today. Draws are going to be really key today. Penn is up, you know, plus 30 on draws for the year. Princeton is 30 under on draws for the year. Lillian Stout back from injury. They're taking the draw at the center circle. Look for Marge Donovan to have impact for Princeton as well. And it's how effective can you be, though, after you win the draw control? I mean, there's so much talk about it. And I'm sure the numbers, if you can break down games, that do we score? Are we successful after we get those wins? Absolutely. It's possession, but then it's converting. I mean, if you get the draw and you're turning it over, it doesn't really do you much good. So Penn's got to really make the most you know, of their draw wins and, and get some early points on the board here. Sam Fish on the save that time with a shot from Taylor Stadler for Penn, but they've got it back. Madison Jeronic behind the cage. Gets it back up top here for Brant. You know, Penn taking their time here on this first possession, which is exactly what Coach Corbett said they wanted to do. Control the tempo. It's not about just getting that quick shot. It's about waiting for the right opportunity. And this is a group that's a young group, right? Not a lot of seniors on this Penn team. Still working to get as much experience as possible. They'll take that. It's the Mellis who scores to get things started for the Quakers here. Just a minute and a half in. Yeah, nice possession by Penn there, taking a lot of time off the shot clock. A challenge by Themelis. Got fouled on that double team, able to get the shot off, and just a great great placement on that bouncer, able to sneak it by Sam Fish. And that's huge if you're Penn, getting off to good starts in these games right now. You talked about getting the win this past week, and now you're going up against one of the top teams in the country, and a good start here for them. They get the opening draw control. They turn it into points as the Mellis has her ninth of the season. 
just her seventh game of the season, however, too, though. Yeah, and that's part of the youth of Penn. They're, you know, different players are getting opportunities. Players are developing at different rates. So, you know, they, they're really looking to sort of rebuild the team coming off of a COVID year and a lot of underclassmen. Back to Moon for Penn and Lillian Stout taking it for Princeton. And again, it's going to be the Quakers that come up with it. Moon has it. I mean, this is a Penn team that you go back to the start from the 2007 season to 2018. Winners of 11 of 12 Ivy League titles. Just dominant in that stretch. A Final Four appearance in there for Penn. R really had a, a really, sh you know, really came across in the Ivy League. You know, back in the early 2000s, it was Dartmouth and Princeton, and then Penn just came on the scene, and as you said, won 11 and 12. And ever since then, this has been the top rivalry in the Ivies. These two teams right here today, 54th meeting back to Thamelis. Gets a step, shoots, and it's going to be tapped in. Quakers 2-0 early. That one just trickled by Sam Fish. You know, and on, on that challenge, defensively, Princeton's got to do a better job of forcing her out. She got a step underneath on her, and all that's all the space that she needed. And really, there was no slide to come as it's on the outside. A nice job there by Thamelis. Let's look at the see if she might have tapped it there at the end, but instead it's just the Mellis who gets her second straight goal here in the first two minutes and 38 seconds. And we saw Princeton struggle against Maryland with the same thing, just really not able to manage these challenges, these one-on-one -on -one challenges and, and getting beat with their feet and ending up right on top of Sam Fish there. Not a whole lot you can do about that one. Princeton's won the last five matchups in this series. And as we talked about it through that 2018 season, it was 2019. That's when Princeton was able to beat this Penn team for the title, right? Yeah, the last time really the Ivies played in, in, at Columbia for the Ivy League championship. Obviously, 2020, we know what happened. They did not have a season last year. So a lot of buildup for, for, for this game over the last few years. Quakers win the first three draw controls of this game here today. Can they make it three for three? Caitlin Kamiski brings it over, and now you've got a little bit of confidence right here at the start of this game. I mean, we say it all the time. It's true, though, lacrosse is a game of runs, and that play like that is, is what Marge Donovan, one of the great things she does, talking about momentum. You know, these takeaways that Marge comes up with really helps her team get fired up. Now they've got to possess here. They've been on D this entire time. Take care of the ball. Give them their offense an opportunity to get settled. One of the best defenders in the nation, 33 for Princeton and White. I know you know a little bit about that uh, as, of course, the only uh, defender in the history uh, to win the Tawartan Award. What do you like about her play? You talk about Donovan, the skills that you see here on the defensive end. She's a really smart defender, and she takes the right risks. You saw there her come up with a cause turnover. She takes really good risks, has good fun risk, has good fundamentals, and you can just tell her presence. She leads this defensive unit for the Tigers. Failed clear, though, gets it back here for Penn as they lead it 2 nothing on goals from Maria Thamelis. Again, we see there Princeton getting beat on those one-on-one -on -one challenges. You know, Penn does have these really quick, shifty, slippery attackers, and they've got to send that early double, close, that, close the gap with the double, and stop those challenges from Penn. You and I were talking before the game about what Penn's going to do defensively, although we haven't been able to see any of that yet because Princeton hasn't had the possession. So what about Princeton? defensively here how are they going to adjust and react? yeah I like the high pressure from Princeton you know I think it's, it's a good approach to try and rattle this young pen attack but footwork wise if they're beating you on these challenges you've got to be ready to slide and recover there it is just like that yep and they're gonna come up with a cause turnover with it as well the hold's gonna be called on Penn. so here comes Princeton Sammy Phillippe number 11 that time for Princeton there's Sam Whiting Brings it over. First time on offense here this afternoon for the Tigers. And, and I bet, you know, we can't hear coaches in the sideline, but I bet they're saying pass it around. Everybody get a touch. Let's take a deep breath. We have not had the ball. Right. Nina Montez. The shooting space call. Yep. Nina Montez is so fast with the ball. I've seen her play multiple times this year. She is so quick off that first step able to catch the defender in shooting space and get the free position. First one of the afternoon, Montez. 
Good it's job a, there. It's a great choice by Montez. Not a great angle. They have not had possession. So really smart choice out of the freshman to pull that out and set something up more structured offensively. Anna Brandt was on defense that time for Penn. And is that just a combination of the angle and how she kind of closed the space a little bit there defensively? I mean, you yeah, know. Absolutely. She turns her back, doubles able to come kind of blindly, and then they close that gap. And, you know, oftentimes you don't even need to check there. It's just good footwork closing that gap, and they come up with the cause turnover. Kyla Sears on her first shot of the afternoon, number seven. She's got it back here. You talked about her in the open. And she goes behind the net with it. Spinning back, shooting and scoring is Mackenzie Blake. Look out, Princeton's on the board. Mackenzie Blake having an unbelievable freshman year for Princeton. That is her 23rd goal of the season. Look at this poise out of the freshman. She's going for that rocker dodge, seeing where her defender is, using her body. Just not a great angle, but incredible placement here by Blake. You can see using her body there just past the helmet of Van Hosen. She's got her whole high school team here in the stands. Obviously, Crowder Rob's happy for her. Yeah, from Haddonfield, New Jersey, and with her 23rd of the season, that is good for third on the team. I, I, I thought fairly good defense by Sophie Davis there for the time being, but then she just kind of got her on that last spin. Yeah, sometimes when you're on the crease and somebody's sort of backing in, you kind of lose where you are in terms of the eight and the angle, and that Mackenzie Blake just worked her defender there enough so that when she turned, she had a, you know an angle to shoot. We just showed her Chris Saylor in her final season, 36th as the head coach of the Tigers. Uh, you played for her for four years. You won two national championships. Uh, we'll be talking a little bit about her, I'm sure, as this game progresses. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, there aren't enough words to really talk about, you know, Chris as a person, Chris as a coach, what Chris has done for the game. And so grateful to be able to participate in, in pieces of, of her final year here at Princeton. We got our Chris Saylor bobblehead doll up here, too, that we got to show Yeah, we do. We absolutely. Yeah. Hot off the press, the Coach yeah. Saylor bobblehead. <laughs> and a little bit of behind the scenes, too, with Coach and uh, her staff. We'll show you a little bit later on as well. Two to one, Penn leading Princeton here. They've won all four draw controls uh, to start this game. Yeah, and Princeton's going to have to make an adjustment on that draw. Obviously, 0 for 4. Time of possession is important. Their D's gonna get tired. Penn's gonna continue to get more, more confidence. They've gotta make adjustments and come up with these draw controls. Stadler trying to win a one-on-one -on -one matchup. The ball is loose. And picked up by Princeton. And Shannon Barry able to scoop it up. You know, credit March Donovan. And we I talked about her fundamentals. You don't see March Donovan with the check. She is just playing such solid body, able to rattle the, that attacker and get the ball loose. Mary Murphy has it being hounded on the sideline and out of bounds. Incredible ride there by Penn, trapping her against that sideline. Did a great job not fouling, going with their body. Really, Mary Murphy had nowhere to go and stepped on the line. Yeah, that was a combination of Natasha Goriarian and Chloe Hunter that time there for Penn. Getting it back for the Quakers. Hunter has it now. On a ride like that, you want to use the sideline as an extra defender, and that's exactly what Penn did. They, they trapped Mary Murphy. She, she had nowhere to go, come up with the turnover, and back again on offense now is Penn. What about the turnover numbers that we were talking about? Princeton averaging 11.7. Penn is averaging over 17 a ball game. Yeah, I mean, Penn has really struggled with the turnovers this year. Princeton has done well. Early in this game, we see a little bit of the reverse happening. Right. This is Brandt, gets a step, shoots, and scores. Anna Brandt for Penn, and it's 3-1 to one Quakers. Another goal for Penn on a 1v1 challenge here. And they're, you know, Princeton, if they're trying to force, you see here on the challenge, she's trying to force her inside, and she just does a little bit of a, you know, sort of hesitation there and gets herself outside. There's nobody on that outside to slide for help. If your help is inside, you got to force inside. That's a freshman right there for Penn at 5'7", Whitehall, Maryland, Anna Brandt, her 17th of the season. When we come back, we'll talk the 2019 Ivy League Championship game. Prior to that, 2018, where the Quakers won. We'll discuss it all when we return. Old Spice College Lacrosse is brought to you by Old Spice. Smell ready for anything.
Let's go back to 2019 here, Ivy League Championship game. Some familiar faces we see here. Kyla Sears, two goals, a career high, five assists. Elizabeth George, five goals. Sam Fish with 16 saves that day. Princeton coming out on top. Their second straight Ivy League title and fifth in the 10 years of the Ivy League tournament. We see Coach Saylor here, you mentioned her final season. I mean, the resume speaks for itself. Went into the Hall of Fame in 2008, also a three-time National Coach of the Year award winner. So that was the 2019 championship for Princeton. 2018, the Ivy League champs were Penn as they were 14 and five that year, six and one in the Ivy League. So it's been back and forth between these two. Yeah, you've got to go all the way back to 2005 when it wasn't Penn or Princeton as the Ivy League championship. So decades of greatness from both of these teams. Well, in that 11 of 12 that Penn won between 07 and 18, the only one they did it was 2015. But yeah, you're right, you gotta go back even farther than that. Good 17 years. Princeton trying to stay undefeated in conference play here with a win today, but they're down right now early. Three to one, seven minutes to play, first quarter. Haven't had that many offensive possessions though, only their second of the game here right now. Ball's left from Montez. Feeds it for White Way. Looking in front, it's not there. We can expect Penn to send early doubles here as you, as you saw there in the Montez challenge. They did a nice job of adjusting back on their slides. Up top, driving in and scoring. Counted for Princeton. And that time it was Kate Mulham. Great challenge here, hard challenge from Kate Mulham. Her 20th goal of the season, she had five goals against Maryland, really the highlight of that game. Just does a great job protecting her stick, keep it, keeping it up high, getting through that double. Just a nice bounce shot. Battling through two defenders right that, there that time, just split them and went in and scored. Yeah, I mean, and what she did there, she really just kept her stick up high and protected it, able to split that double. Continuing where she left off, as I said, she had an incredible game against Maryland. Really a highlight for the Tigers that night. It's a one goal game here. Six minutes and 29 seconds to play first quarter. Two goals in 59 seconds. Princeton with two goals in the last two shots, so. Effective when they have had the ball and the possession. Stabler at the draw control that time for Princeton. And again, Moon for Penn. Quakers have it. Again, Penn coming up with that 50-50 ball on the draw. Really just going up for it. And Princeton's got to get in the mix there and compete on those 50-50 balls. Kaminsky. Princeton switching up their defense here. Moving away from the man-to-man, -man, moving into a zone. Three-second call, which sometimes can happen into a zone. Obviously, you've got to be marked on a player within a six length. You've got three seconds to get out of the arc if you're not marked up. Madison Jeronic. And once again, it's just that, that tough angle over there. Yeah, I mean, not, not a great angle to shoot on those outside hashes. Better to kind of wait for a better op opportunity if you're not comfortable or just sur she's surrounded by Princeton defenders there. Back up top here for Brandt. Scored the last goal for Penn. Nice feed in the middle and the shot over the cage that time from Comiskey. Penn gets it back up top, Hunter, and she shut off rather quickly there by Princeton D. Great collapse there by Princeton D on that double. You see them, a little, it's a little bit chaotic as they shift into their zone. Again, back in front, and it gets three defenders that time, Brandt. So this kind of had her blanketed. 
the shot, shot clock, clock violation by yeah. Princeton there, or by Penn. You know, great job by Princeton defense there. Really kind of gave them a new look. That's the first time they've seen the zone today. Really got them out of sorts. Did a nice job collapsing on the challenges. Really not giving Penn that space to challenge it as they've had, you know, sort of early in this game. Here's Olivia Pugh. You never want to be caught like this in a ride on transition. They've got to move the ball. As, as she's taking her time there, the Penn D is sort of shifting into place and really able to set themselves up for a turnover. They've got to move this ball more quickly. Yeah, I mean, give uh, Penn a lot of credit here. Now it's uh, two for four on the clears uh, for Princeton here today. Nice job by Sam DeVito getting herself out of trouble there. See if we can find Sears, number seven. She's taking one shot here today. She's up at the top. This one goes on from Kate Moham once again, recovered by the Tigers. Now it's over to Barry. You know, and Penn did such a nice job on that ride. Princeton's already down to 23 seconds on the shot clock. I say that time pulled in by Van Hosen. So the eighth game of the season for Kelly Van Hosen, Chrissy Kowalski, the other goalkeeper, has played in 11 games and has a little bit better of a goals against average and save percentage. I mean, it's at 48% for Kowalski, 44% for Van Hosen. Yeah, I mean, that's so hard when you have goalies sort of that are that close and to be this deep in the season and kind of still going back and forth. It's got to be a challenge for Penn. Van Hosen off to a good start. Failed clear here as Princeton brings it over. Trying to tie this up at three. We've got three minutes left to go in the first quarter. Here's Sears for Moham. Back to the outside for Shannon Barry. He's got Sears up top, has it. Look for an early double here from Sears on the challenge. One on one though, she takes it, bouncer not there, and it's backed up by Mackenzie Blake. Awful close to a charge there by Sears. Nice job defensively of holding position. Feel like we're starting to see a few more of those uh, nowadays, or what do you think? I don't know. I mean, we, we could use some more. Mike is a defender. I think like it's so more. hard okay. to get a charge call as a defender, but yeah, you are. You know, it doesn't, it's not basketball. They don't have to be stationary. It's right. just that the, the attacker has to be sort of charging their way in, and that was an example there. Nita Montez ties this game at three. Absolute rocket from Nina Montez. Again, so quick with that lateral step. She has a great release. Not, not a great angle again, but just such a quick release. A little bit deceptive there. Hard to see kind of where that ball's coming out. Able to get it past Van Hosen. Great shot from Montez. We're tied at three. She's got 14 now on the season. And a timeout taken by Penn with 2.04 to play in this first quarter. So a strong start from Penn. They were winning the draw controls early. They scored two in a row from Maria Themelis. Got another one from Anna Brandt. They were up three to one, but now we're tied at three three. Yeah, you know, as advertised, we've got this battle with these Ivy teams. We're gonna get to see it here. Penn's quick start, Themelis with those first two goals right off these draws, battling through some contact there. And then off the challenges, Penn has had a success today, really just taking Princeton one-on-one. -on -one. That one trickles in past Sam Fish. Well, you talked about it at the start, one and three in the Ivy League right now, four and eight, very uncharacteristic of a, of a Penn team, but they have to have this one here tonight if they want to keep their chances alive again to the Ivy League tournament. Yeah, absolutely. As we said, only the top four teams make it. Penn just one win in the Ivy League. You know, they've got to win this game, and then they've got two more Ivy games, as you see here. Cornell and Harvard at 3-2, and two, and Brown above Penn. So, you know, the battle for that fit, that fourth spot is going to be, in third and fourth spot, actually, is going to be a challenge. Penn, if they want to get in the mix, they've got to win this game. How about Princeton after this? They're going to take on Harvard, then Columbia, both on the road, and then they'll be back here to take on Yale 
on Saturday, April 30th. Yeah, Chris Saylor's last home game at Class of 952 against Yale, who's currently undefeated in the Ivy League, having a great season under Coach Erica Legro. And I think, you know, that one's shaping up, if all things play out, shaping up to be a classic. Number two in Division I wins all time and number two at one institution. I mean, that's the thing to think about being in one place for all this time. All the players that have come through this program, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, to be at this, she, she is part of the institution. She is Prince and Lacrosse, you know, in my mind, and just an incredible career. 15 Ivy League championships as the head coach, three national championships. How about your first one, the first of two when you were here? What, 2002? 2002. We lost our first game and we didn't lose again. So it was kind of a kind of a fairy tale season. We had a huge, a huge senior class that was incredibly talented and, and really just kind of a Cinderella season and one of the most fun times I've ever had playing the sport. And you know, that's 20 years ago and Sailor was already here for 16 years. Right, you know, that, was right, that was the middle of her career. That was right. 20 years ago. So yeah, I mean, to have that sustained excellence is truly remarkable at one institution. Picked up by the Tigers, Moham. You know, Coach Corbett talked about how good Chris is at in-game adjustments. You see one there, Moham on the draw, a new look. Princeton able to come up with that one. Great adjustment there by the Tiger coaching staff. Yeah, you just get a different look once in a while, right? Change things up, the, uh, and you have to when you're not getting them, and it's been Ken and Moon for the most part for Penn, so we'll see if they make any adjustments either, just to kind of change it up once in a while, almost like your defense, right? Maybe yeah, you're absolutely. set to play one side of defense, but just for one possession, let's yeah. give them a different look. Everybody has their own draw technique, so you put a new person in there. The, you know, Ken and Moon's got to adjust. Kate Moham, she hasn't done, you know, done a draw against her yet, so just those shifts alone kind of are an advantage for the Tigers. And that's Moham right there. It gives it up now for Kyla Sears. Sears, couple moves. And a whistle against Penn here. Got a shooting space and yep. call against Penn. Nice job by Princeton bringing their cutter into that space. Kyla with the challenge, able to get that shooting space call. Kyla Sears shoots as she scores, and Princeton has the lead. Four to three, their first lead today. Really nice job by Sears with deception there. Coming off of an outside hash, kind of went to her left and shot to the right. You get a chance to see here as she's going left, places that ball weak side hip against Van Hosen. Just a, like that, that is all about placement. She did not need a ton of speed there. Just absolutely perfect placement by Sears. 36th of the year. The reigning Ivy League player of the week. Number six nationally in career points per game. This is her final year now in a Princeton uniform. One of the best players in the country. One of the best attackers really at Princeton all time. Pretty yeah, much. she's third all time in points, just 24 away from tying the top spot. Fourth with 174 goals going into today. On the Tourton watch list, mm -hmm. along with teammate Marge Donovan, one of only, two of only three Ivy League players on the watch list, the third being Devin McLean out of, out of Brown University. Two goals in one minute for the Tigers. They have now scored three in a row. We still have a minute to go in this first quarter, so they've really taken command here after being down three to one early. Shot clock is off, 40 seconds to play. First quarter, what do you like here with uh, this opportunity and what's well left for time here in the first. Yeah, I think they've got to move the ball around. Penn is doing a really nice job of clogging up that middle. So some quick passes, maybe get a cutter open with feed in the middle here. You see them working a little bit up top. Montez gets it up top for Mulham. Makes a move, gets a step. She shoots, she scores with 18 seconds left in the first. And that's two now for Kate Mulham. Given Penn a little bit of a dose of their own medicine, we've seen Penn do that to Princeton with that just quick face dodge dead down the alley. The help comes late to Mulham. Great timing on that release and a beautiful finish. 
you had said it earlier, you have to get that slide coming over, right? I don't know if they're going to be able to stop too many of these one-on-one -on -one opportunities, right? No, and that's how, that low to high slide is so difficult because oftentimes you end up in shooting space and you saw the defender there trying to avoid it, yep. but you've got to come harder, quicker. Morgan Smith trying to get, get in the way there, but Mulham, well-timed release, 21st goal of the year. It's a 4 nothing run over the last six minutes and 11 seconds, and they've also won three of the last four draw controls, too, as well, and that's a big reason why. Yeah, a great adjustment there by Princeton. I mean, that is the difference. Penn, you know, came out, won the first four. Now Princeton's won three of the last four. Plenty of time here, Mike. 18 seconds yeah. is, is a lot of time. You get a clean draw. Ken and Moon again still for Penn and Mulham for Princeton. Okay, here come the Quakers. An opportunity, six seconds to play. You saw Princeton kind of hands off. They were approaching their third foul in transition, which would result in a green card, so smart play by them. Stadler shoots at the end of it. Sam Fish cleans it up, and that's the end of the first quarter. Just enough to slow down that fast break from Penn with those two fouls, not getting the third foul, not going down a player, but nicely done by Princeton. Not a great opportunity there by Penn, just, just ran out of time. It was an outstanding start for Penn here to begin. They won the first four draw controls of the game. They scored three of the first four goals. They were up three to one, but now it's a 5-3 Tigers lead as we head to the second after this. The three national championships for Princeton, 94, 02, and 03. They lead Penn right now, five to three, as we get set for the start of the second quarter. Friday night, ESPN and ABC, three NBA playoff games, first at seven Eastern. Heat and the Hawks, Miami leads two nothing in that series. Then the Bucks and the Bulls on ABC, Milwaukee up 1-0. And then the Suns and the Pelicans. That's gonna round things out. That series is tied at one game a piece also available on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. NBA playoffs are underway. We're getting underway here with the start of the second quarter. Mike Corey alongside two-time national champion and Tawarton Trophy winner from Princeton, Rachel DiCecco. And what a response by Princeton. They're on a four goal in a row streak right now heading into the second. Yeah, slow start for Princeton. Penn started out three and five shooting then went 0-3 and, and Princeton coming through five for nine shooting that first quarter so really got it off to a slow start but able to pick it up and, and really go in this four goal run at the end you know last few minutes of the first quarter now Princeton's going to go with Sammy Phillippe at the uh, draw control for them and it's still Ken and Moon again for Penn Quakers have it alternate possession on that draw control Goes to Penn. Seven to three, they lead that category now. Seven of the first 10. But again, they're down by two. Been able to grab the pass, Stadler. And Princeton comes up with it. Excellent job, Mary Murphy. And look out, Montez. Pulls it aside, gets it back up top, a feed in front. And bring it back out. Great job by Mary Murphy coming up with that ground ball in transition, starting that fast break. Princeton almost moving too quickly for themselves, yeah. couldn't quite get a shot off, but kept possession. They're going to settle it here, look for a better opportunity. Well, and then you got to wait sometimes for your teammates, in case it's a missed shot behind the case you don't have anybody back there, right? Don't waste one. Yeah, she, she got the, the cutter on the second layer, just couldn't quite get a shot off. A good, a good choice by Prince and not to, not to force that in the fast break. Especially up two here early on, looking to get five in a row and go up three. Russell called on Penn. Great handle there by Sears under a ton of pressure. Reposition coming up, and it's going to be for Kyla Sears. 
On the outside hash on the opposite side that she had first quarter. We'll see if she's able to do the same thing here again. Gets in there and scores it. Her second today. Kyla Sears has such an incredibly quick first step and obviously in a free position, free position that's a huge advantage. You see her using the left side of her body there to shield the ball, kind of force her defender over to the left to get a little bit of a better angle. Great job there by Kyla Sears. Yeah, great call, Rachel. You saw that there against Sammy, or excuse me, against uh, Gory Arian, who you just kind of body her off there, right? Give yourself that angle, and it's tough for her to get in front to try to make a play on the ball. Yeah, really worked to give herself a better angle. As we, as we saw her doing the first quarter, that outside hash isn't ideal. She's made the most of it both times, though. So it's a five-goal run here in the last 9.02 for the Tigers. Six to three. Moon able to pop it up in there, and now it's picked up by Princeton. That's Marge Donovan. Yeah, another change on the draw. We saw Philippi on the draw that time for Princeton. Yeah, so they've changed it up a few times here. Donovan, then they've had Mulham, and then Philippi. Making a move, shooting wide to the right that time with a shot from Mulham. She already has two goals today, number 13. Yeah, it does such a nice job of getting her hands free and getting that quick shot off. We'll work it back up top here for Sears. And Mulham's done a real nice job in the last three games. You see there, 10 goals. Nineteen on the season coming in. She's got two today, so 21. Nice job oh, by call. Penn there. Yeah, denying the challenge by Mulham and then coming up with that ground ball to the mishandle. Right now in the middle. And that time it got over to Stadler. A good opportunity here for the Quakers, trying to get one back, free position for Taylor Stadler. Dumps it behind the cage, and then coming in front and scoring for the Quakers was Madison Jeronic. A great play by Penn from start to finish. Really nice management of that fast break. Moved the ball, slide came low to high, and then great vision there. No Princeton defender because it was off the fast break in position to make that slide. Great unselfish play coming around that crease. Giving herself a, a, a good angle. That's a very well-designed play right there. Yeah, really start to finish. As I said, they handled that fast break really well. They play her up and were able to move that, get Princeton in shooting space in their slide, and then unselfish play there by Penn, passing it off to Madison Juranic so she could finish. Third goal of the season. They needed that. It was five in a row by Princeton. First assisted goal of the game for Penn as they're now within two. Moon's able to get it. Great wrist strength there by Kenan yeah. Moon. And then incredible pressure by Princeton with that double team. Tigers have it. Sears battling through all comers, and the ball's knocked away. Tigers still come up with it. Excellent job there from Mackenzie Blake to recover that ball. Yeah, Princeton looking to settle it down. A little bit chaotic there off the draw, but great aggressive, clean play by both teams. Eleven to nine shots in favor of the Tigers so far in this one. Big defensive possession here, really for Penn. Oh, it's early, but you know they just got one back to stop a run. Don't want to give it right back here as it goes back over the Sears, looking for the cutters. Knocked out of her stick. Ball in the middle, picked up by Penn. 
Great one-on-one -on -one defense there by Grace Fujinaga against Kyla Sears, denying that challenge. That was Sophie Davis who grabbed it, 13 for the Quakers. Four turnovers for Princeton. And we've seen a lot of, you know, a lot of unassisted goals tonight. A lot of one-on-one -on -one yeah. challenges. Both teams are going to have to get more players involved, move that ball around a little bit, get those, get the defense shifting a little bit out of sync. Keeley block for Penn, 24 had it. Now gets it over on the far side. She'll get it right back behind the net. Looking for the cutter. That time was Stadler, not there. Kamiski. Back up top. They've got to get her inside, yeah. Brandt. She Penn did a nice job of clearing to the right side. Left side was wide open. The defender there's got a force. Philby's got to force in to help there. She was all alone on the outside. Brandt scored the third goal of the game for Penn to put them up 3-1. Now in the free position here, a chance to cut it to a one-goal game. Anna Brandt shoots and scores. Nice job by Anna Brandt off the eight meter. Quick off the hash, good shot placement. Little two nothing run here for Penn. The last two minutes and 16 seconds, they'll take it. It's a one goal game, six to five. Despite getting four in a row uh, in that first quarter, Penn still doubling up on the draws, eight to four against the Tigers. We've got Mulham back at the center circle for Princeton. Off the stick of Brandt there for the moment, and she's gonna pick it up. A oh, good ride here for Princeton. And it's taken away, Mulham. Good job by Mulham there. They didn't have numbers. With Penn on a you know a little bit of a run here, want to take their time, not not just turn it over and give Penn a chance to tie this up. Mulham with two goals. Sears has two goals. Blake and Montez each have one for Princeton right now. Sears flips it for Samantha DeVito. Sam DeVito was an intern at the PLL with me last summer. Got Good. to work with her. How'd that go? What did you she uh, did a great recognize job. from her outside yeah. of lacrosse? Yeah. She's a tiger. She did a great job. <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> Can't wait for the PLL coming up on ESPN in the summer. It's going to be a lot of fun. You see them looking to isolate Sears. They've created some space for her. Just a nice job playing her one-on-one. -on -one. Trying to s disrupt that pass. There's 20 seconds left in the shot clock. Donovan for Princeton gets it to Sears. 10 to shoot now. They've got to move the ball. I think they're sort of waiting for somebody else to step in here and, and shoot, but they're going to run out of time. She doesn't get this off. Sears being shut down, and Penn comes up with it. Morgan Smith with excellent defense for the Quakers that yeah, time. Yeah, great defensive stand there by Penn. As I said, you know they're really the Tigers are looking to Kyla for most of their offense right now. Not able to really get get it started. They've got to move the ball, involve some more attackers, create different opportunities so that Kyla can get involved in other ways. All right, so Penn with an opportunity to tie this game at six here, halfway through the second quarter. That's off the stick of Geronic. Yeah. 
I think they got Pew there on the empty stick check. Restart gets it over to Femelis, who scored the first two goals of this game for Penn. Number two. Now it's Comiskey. There's Quali Hunter. Cut in the middle and off the stick that time of Bella Keo. The right idea though. Yeah, just, just sort of handcuffed her a little bit on that pass. Good attempt at a handle and a shot there, but Princeton able to come up with it. Up top for Stout. Ball on the turf, she picks it up. It was excellent defense in that last possession by Penn. Yeah, I've been really impressed with their defense so far tonight. Obviously, they've had some lapses, but their one-on-one -on -one right. is so solid. They know that Princeton's attack is centered around Kyla Sears. They did a nice job of trying to minimize her. Even, even though she has two goals, right. she could have many more with as much as she's possessing the ball. Yeah, it took her a little bit to get going, and then now here's Montez. Little two-player game. Montez and Sears trying to get something started. Mulham shoots, and she scores. So a hat trick already today for Kate Mulham for the Tigers as they go back up two. Nice job by Mulham here. She just loves that, goes a little bit underneath, switch of the hands, great shot placement. She has such a quick release. I think goalies are having a hard time. I've seen her do this before this season, have a hard time kind of tracking where her shot's going. A nice job there by Mulham. Two goal lead for the Tigers, 6.26 to play in this first half. We got a timeout. Why are we showing you table tennis here today in lacrosse action? We'll explain when we come back. Welcome back to Old Spice College Across on ESPN. Mike Corey and Rachel DiCecco, and hey, you know about all this, right? This is Coach Chris Saylor and Assistant Coach Karen Maurer. A little ping pong, oh. table tennis action. <laughs> Who's got the upper hand in this game? That so, would have been a shot. That would have been a one. Karen has <laughs> the, the advantage. They play table tennis nearly every, every day together. Karen beats Chris on most days, but two, two very in, in competitive, intense people. So they're having some fun out there at the ping pong table. One of their routines they have in the office. Well, there's the championships as uh, head coach, uh, all three in history uh, under her leadership now in her 36th and final season. And, and it's going to take some time probably for her to, at the end of it all, to go, go back and just kind of really be appreciative of everything that she's accomplished and all the lives that she's affected along the way. Because I know we asked her about that this week, but you're right in the middle of a season and yeah, it's she, not the time for that now. She's focused on her team in this year. And certainly there'll be opportunities to honor her as the season goes on and after the season to really just thank her for everything she's done. Penn has won four of the last five draw controls. Can they add one to it here? Not this time, picked up by Princeton. Well, that was a five goal run scored by Princeton. And now Mulham shoots and it's backed up by Blake. That five goal run was stopped by Penn, came back with two in a row. And then Princeton with Mulham, who has the hat trick, just scored the last one, seven to five. Princeton leads by two. Nope, that's not it. Whistle here. Against Penn that time and Taylor Stadler. Free position for Princeton. Can they add another? We'll see. Shot score. It's Grace Takas. Chrissy Kowalski in cage now for the Quakers. Grace Tuck is this, this weak side high placement has been so successful for Princeton today. First against Van Hosen, now against Kowalski. Just kind of guessing there on that one. 
Yeah, great tuck is nice job, kind of going left, shooting yeah. to back to the right. As a goalie, those free positions, it, if there's not a lot of pressure, it's, it's so hard to stop. That's why they can be such an advantage, you know, in the women's game. That's 27 now in the season, second on the team in scoring for Grace as Princeton goes up three. He talked about the goalie change there for Kowalski. This is their 12th game of the season. 48% save percentage for the Quakers. We saw Kelly Van Hosen for about a quarter and a half. So we'll see if it's Kowalski the rest of the way. Never know if they go back and forth here. 534 left. And so tough as a goalie mentally. Obviously, right. she's been the starter. Now she's coming off the bench. You know, if you're Penn, you want her to get a few few early saves in, get that confidence up and kind of get the juices flowing, get her, get her into the game. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's ever ideal, you know, when you talk about it, having two and going back and forth. I mean, sometimes, I guess, if you watch it from the sideline, though, you get a different perspective, at least how the game could be going early, maybe, and but not really what you're looking for. No, I mean, you unless it's a planned. I've seen that, you know, the only time I've seen it work, honestly, is in the PLL with the archers between Gittleman and Drew Adams. They okay. split a half. They, know, they knew they were splitting it. It worked for them. I think when you don't know, and you're not sure when you're getting the nod. You know, you've got to be ready, but it's hard to come in cold, down a few goals. Obviously, it just increases the pressure a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's a three-goal game and four and a half to play. Here's Sears. Defense comes over. She gets it in front, and Blake that time. Going a little bit old school with the shovel yeah, shot shovel there. Shot. No, that's a great look, though, by Sears. They're bringing that double to her and just dumping it off. Just a weird angle for Blake, but. Brinson kind of dominating second quarter shooting here, eight to two. Let's see if the Quakers can come back with something here. What have you noticed, though, offensively? I mean, the first couple of goals by Thamelis, and then, you know, then they scored two in a row, Jeronic and Brandt. I mean, some pretty good sequences. Yeah, I mean, they haven't had a shot even in six minutes. So kudos to Princeton D here. But they, you know, Penn's got to get back into it offensively, move that ball around, try and create some opportunity. Let's keep an eye on the cutters there. That time is Bella Keo trying to go through number 40. Is it for Themelis? Now for Chloe Hunter. Chloe Hunter, great speed there at a step on her defender, just didn't quite have the angle. Got it back, shoots, and it's going to stay with Penn. Good work there by Brandt. Now working around in front and being shut off that time is Jeronic. So again, that Princeton defense not giving her a look at it. Shot clock. Yeah, just going to say they've got under 15 seconds here. They're just holding on to the ball too long. They've got to get the ball moving. Now she's got some space here to work with. Hunter feeds it in front. The shot turned around there from Stadler. And it hit the goalkeeper, so the save from Sam Fish, and it resets the clock to 60 as Penn gets it back. Yeah, they'll get a fresh 60 here. It was a nice slide by Olivia Pugh to try and slow down the momentum of that one-on-one. -on -one. They did a nice job of isolating, but Princeton able to come up with the stop. The I can't see. Love hearing the communication, right? You can, uh, very clear, too, very whatever clear. It's, it's mesmerizing me a little bit. You love to hear that defensive communication. That's, you know, that's half the battle with defense. You've got to communicate, talk to each other. Brandt. Blocked out its way in. The rebound is there by Jeronic. An Andy Aldave garbage goal style. <laughs> and a great initial stop there by Fish. Penn had a nice look, but Fortunately, not able to save it cleanly. Lost it for a second. And yeah, they did a nice job of isolating Brent there. You know, offensively, you knowing where that ball is at all times, being in the right place, anticipating that opportunity. Really, really nice play there by Madison Geronic. So two for Jeronic here tonight, two for Brandt, and two for Thamelis for Penn. And that's their six. Kind of what you'd expect from Penn. You know, they've had a balanced attack this year. No, nobody's sort of dominating in the points category.
Rachel, we've had 14 goals in this game, only one assisted goal combined. Yeah, that's a remarkable stat. Just a lot of challenges. Right? A lot of one-on-ones here, both teams. Don't normally see that. Is this one of those type of games, and I, you know, when you go back to, you know, when you played and the rivalry that you've watched throughout this time, it's almost like, here comes Hunter first. No matter what kind of year each team would be having, and of course, usually they're having really good seasons, but this matchup's always got to seem to be close, I feel like. Exactly. It doesn't matter, you know, who's up, who's down. Both of these teams know this rivalry and will show up in a big way. And Penn knows that their season in terms of the Ivy to try to become one of those top four teams in the tournament is on the line. They've got to win here tonight. They've really got to win out, essentially. Yeah, essentially they do need to win out to get that top spot. It should be 58. It wasn't a reset. It was a They're going to fix the shot clock here, move back to 58. I, think, I believe they called that foul on the body. So Brant Going to get it restarted here. Minute 39 to play in the first half. Jarek. Better job by Penn here, moving the ball. They got to keep it moving and not go stagnant. Miles shoots Sam Fish on the save. Penn comes back up with it. That's another new 60 on the shot clock here. Hasn't been put up yet. I wonder if they consider that a change of possession and then they oh, get a new yeah. 90. That must be what they did. Right, I, I, you know, should have reset to 60, but they must have counted that as a prince of possession from Fish and then. Sure, because it was over a minute to go. So there should have been a differential they would have had to put a shot on. Now the clock is off and they got 42 seconds left in the first half. Yep. Great second chance opportunity here for Penn to close out this half, get within one. Thamelis works her way in front and scores. What an individual effort. She's got a hat trick today, and it's a one goal game with 31 seconds left in the first half. See, they clear space for Thamelis, trying to keep her out, but she got a step on her defender and then just cuts back inside. And really that slide across the crease is so hard when somebody's coming full speed. Really nice job there by Penn creating that space and then Thamelis with her third of the night with that strong challenge. Well, I was just gonna say good footwork too for her to stay out of the crease and to come sliding in front after she made that move and gets her third goal tonight. 2-0 run in a minute, 58 seconds. Coming up at the half, we'll look at the Tawarton Award watch list. First half stats and highlights here between Penn and Princeton in the 54th meeting of all time between these two. And we've got a good one. It's a one goal game, 31.6 seconds remaining in this first half. It's been Ken and Moon taking all the draws here for Penn today and Lillian Stout this time, and she has it for the moment. It's loose. Clock winding down, 20 seconds to go. Prince to possession, what can they do here? They've got to move the ball quickly, create opportunity. They've got to keep it moving here, under 10 seconds. Couple fakes. Defense converges, Sears has it. Clock with two to shoot in front. It's knocked around and it's scooped up by Chrissy Kowalski in goal. And that is the end of the first half. How about it here, one goal game. <laughs> A really back and forth game here. You know, Penn dominating the job. Princeton really dominating possession in that second quarter. We've seen so many unassisted goals here tonight, Mike. A lot of great challenges, some great defense. We are in for a treat here in the second half. We'll be back coming up after the break. We'll return with a halftime report from Princeton. We welcome you back to Old Spice College Across on ESPN. 
this Wednesday night, 54th meeting, Penn and Princeton. The Ivy League matchup. One goal game, 8-7. Mike Corey alongside two-time Princeton national champion and Tawartan Trophy winner, Rachel DiCecco. And here we go, getting set to see if the Quakers can come back and win this game. They had a 3-1 lead early. A five-goal run by Princeton. Moham has a hat trick. But they've come back with four of the last six goals. Nice job toward the end of the half to get one to bring it within one. Let's get your overall take here and what they can do to pull off this win here tonight. Let's start with Pat. You know, it's, it's turnovers and possession. You know, they've got to move the ball more offensively. Princeton did a good job adjusting to their challenges in that second quarter. They are coming up with the draw control, so they're getting the ball. They've got to convert. Princeton, on the other hand, is just it's just moving the ball more quickly on attack. And that, you know, that starts with they've got to draw first, obviously, starting with possession and look to minimize Penn's challenges to goal and really play solid team defense. We see here, normally games are five, seven o'clock. We've got a five o'clock start. You see the sun starting to set, wondering if the sunset will play a, play a role here, particularly for Chrissy Kowalski as that is sort of shining in her face in this third quarter. The Mellis, yep. Having a great night. Three goals on three shots, five draw controls for Maria Thamelis. Stepping up here for Penn. Close to half of her goal production in just one game here tonight, as opposed to the first six games of her season that she's been able to play. Yeah, and, and you know, Thamelis, you know, Karen Corbett talked about different players stepping up. The Mel is just a sophomore, which means last year she didn't play any lacrosse. So this yeah. is really her first season playing. She's six games into her career. I think as the season develops, some of these younger players from Penn will start to get a little more confidence, adjust a little bit more to the to the pace of the college game. And you know, even though it's a bit of a rebuilding year in some ways for Penn, you know, I'm, I'm impressed with what I've with what I've seen tonight. Penn has won three of the last four draws here, or Princeton has, excuse me. Got Stout back at the draw circle for the Tigers, trying all sorts of di different things to, to best Ken and Moon. Yep, it's been all Moon tonight for Princeton or for Penn. Ball knocked around. Going to be Tigers possession. Yeah, and that's the thing. You talked about some of these players and, you know, just kind of get it restarted here in 2022. I mean, you know, everything kind of goes back to 2019, right? I mean, that was like the last full season. Of course, 20 was cut well short. Yeah, particularly in the Ivies because they have a little bit of a later start. And then last year was no competition. So, right. you know, most of these teams went more than 700 days without a game. Princeton won the championship in 2019. Penn won it in 2018. Princeton trying to go to 4-0 in the conference with a win here tonight. They got the top team in Yale coming here at home in the final game of the regular season. Penn on the other side, 1-3 in conference play. They need this one and pretty much the rest of their remaining games to try to get into that top four spot. The Ivy League Tournament. Shot clock's inside, 20 shot, score, Princeton Montez. Montez is so fun to watch. I mean, her speed is incredible, but you see there, it's a great challenge by Montez. They're taking it from behind, kind of you can see getting a little bit of momentum here, coming right at her attacker. Quick little face dodge, just rips a riser there. Just really smart play by the freshman. And she didn't, you know, she had the angle. She didn't wait for the D to collapse on her. Took a quick shot. That's a really hard slide to make in it and really hard to stop with that kind of speed that she has off of a challenge. Yeah, I mean, you said it earlier, her release is amazing and it almost doesn't even matter sometimes the angle. You're right though, she got by the defender there, had a good look, but she just gets rid of it so fast. And good accuracy too. And she's got her second goal tonight. Yeah, nice first possession by the Tigers there. Yeah. 
And the assist that time from Abby Wilhelm for Princeton. Something we haven't been able to say too much tonight that a goal was assisted. And each team has one assist on their goals tonight. So one assist for Princeton on their nine goals, one for Penn on the seven they've scored. And I would look for both teams in this yeah. half to, to score more off of the assisted goals. You see Kate Mulham though taking it herself. You know, nice. she, she's just got, she's got the speed advantage on her defender tonight and she's making the most of it. Nice save from Kowalski that time. Ball loose though, look out. Kowalski gets back at the goal. Montez somehow scoops it up. And a good job to settle it down. This is the second time tonight we've seen Montez make the right call on a fast break like that. Just smart heads up play. Just a freshman halfway through her first season. Sears, and that got deflected on its way in. Wow, look out, Penn. A lot of contact there. Fujinaga, Grace Fujinaga that time lost her stick and went down hard, 36 for Penn. Sears flips it up for Whiteway. Oh, big hit. Whistle there that time on Caitlin Kaminsky. That's the right play defensively to try and intercept. Just could not kind of control her body there. And you see this flip. Syracuse kind of coined this sort of version of the attack, a little bit of a weave flip. Sears tried to go in front for Sophie Whiteway. Going to be scooped up on the sideline from Lillian Stout. Montez again, such a threat. Nice feed in front, bouncy shot. I mean, a piece of it that time was Kowalski. Princeton though, I thought she got a piece of it. Now it's gonna be a shot clock violation. Yeah, wondering why that shot clock didn't reset there. Princeton coach is saying right? that it was a yeah, goalie I mean, save. Sa coach Saylor is on the field, I rate. She's got a point. I've not, I've not seen, uh, yeah, Chris is very, very irate there, obviously trying to explain that goalie save resets the shot clock. Yeah, how was that possible? Should have been at least a 60 second as they yep. got it back. Yep. You know, that could be, that could be a big play here because now come down the other end. Again, an eight meter off the shooting space. You know, and even though, I mean, that was it, it ended up being a shot clock violation, debatable whether it actually was. That a shot clock violation defensively, so it kind of fires you up, fires your attack up. It's right. just a huge lift emotionally when you're able to run a team down with their shot clock. Stabler had backed it out, and Penn battling to get this one, coming out as Fish. Player down for Penn, that is Madison Jeronic. Princeton has it, and Sophie Whiteway starts the break the other way, and it's over the midfield line and into the stick of Sam Whiting. You know, two seconds sooner with that substitution, and Natasha Gorian has an interception there. Really well-timed play out of the box there by Penn. Really good opportunity for Penn to try to take advantage of that. Either non-call, if you will, but they just weren't able to. That could have made it a one-goal game again. I think what you said is very accurate. It's like the momentum and just kind of firing up the team, too. Now the shot to score, and Princeton will get that momentum right back, thanks to Kate Mulham once again. Yeah, Penn struggling to come, come up with an answer for Kate Mulham off those challenges. Her fourth of the night here. You see, just you know, she's just challenging down the alley each time. Quick little face dodge and then charge it hard down the alley. Penn does, just does not have an answer for that yet. They, you know, what they've got to do is send that slide earlier or shade her directly into a double team. They're giving her sort of her, her choice of which way to go and she's just too quick with that first step. Twelve goals in the last three games for her. Two goals in three minutes and 40 seconds. And it ties their largest lead tonight at three goals.
was 6-3 earlier and battled back to make it 6-5. Now we're back to a three-goal lead, 10-7 here. Just over, just under 10 minutes to go in this third quarter. Lillian Stout for Princeton. Kenan Moon here for Penn. She's taken all the draws today. It's a foul against yep. Kenan Moon, so that'll be Princeton ball. Draw violation. They've won five of the last six now, Princeton has. Yeah, now they're even up 10-10 on the draws here. Well, you had said it. I think they've done a nice job of changing up the players at the draw. It's worked well, even it up. Mulham again, are you kidding me? He just said it. That's five now for her today. Matching her season high five against the Terps. I mean, they're, she's, Princeton's doing a nice job of creating space for her. You see here, she's got a full head of steam and that is so hard to stop. Just too quick, and her shot placement, she's so accurate on her shot and that release. Two goals in under 30 seconds for Princeton. Both by this young lady, 24th of the season. Timeout here for Princeton. Tigers starting to take a little command here. The separation is now four, largest lead of the game so far today. Eleven to seven, Princeton leads it. Nine twenty-four to play in this third quarter. The NFL Draft coming your way April twenty-eighth, twenty-ninth, and thirtieth. ESPN will have every pick along with our expert analysis. Looking forward to that starting on the twenty-eighth. Coverage is also available on the NFL Network. ABC's coverage focuses on the prospects' journey to the draft. Also on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio, the ESPN app. The NFL Draft from Vegas on April twenty-eighth. All right, here is the committee's top 10. The next reveal coming up on April 30th. What do you think of this? Just some incredible teams. Obviously, you see the ACC heavy top four there. You know, North Carolina undefeated. It feels like it's theirs to lose this year based on the talent they have. Princeton in that, you know, top 10 looking to stay there. Boston College with a one goal loss to North Carolina. Their only other loss this past weekend at Duke by one goal in the return for Charlotte North to where she used to play, and that place was crazy. Uh, so, you know, they're obviously going to be right there. I mean, they're unbelievable. Yeah, and we saw what Syracuse did last year with all the injuries they had. Unfortunately, more injuries for them this year, but don't count them out. And then you've got Northwestern, you've got Stony Brook, you've got Princeton, Maryland. I mean, so, so much talent. You know, look at the NCAA tournament is going to be special this year. Obviously, North Carolina feels like they're, you know, ahead of the pack, but a lot of talent in that top 10. Princeton possession, Kyla Sears. You know, with the four goal lead now, Princeton, you know, has the luxury of, of really taking their time, using the clock, waiting just for, wearing down that Pendy and just waiting for the right opportunity. Looks like Penn is face guarding Mulham now. Well, they, uh, after five goals, and you gotta try to do something a little different to disrupt her and not give her the opportunities that she's clearly had here. Ball out on the sidelines. Awesome effort by Penn, yeah, but it's great Princeton effort. possession. And you see Mulham pulling herself out wide, so now it's basically 6v6. Six 5v5, six. Six. Five five. So, sorry, she pulls out. Yep. Sears, fires, save is made by Chrissy Kowalski. Yeah, and you've got to, I mean, what else do you do with Mulham at this point but face guarder? It just makes that 5v5 more D, more, more ground for the D to cover there. Total of six saves combined now by both goalkeepers, Kelly Van Hosen and Chrissy Kowalski for Penn up to this point. Penn, Chloe Hunter. Shut off, backs it back at, they go behind the net. Substitution, Bella Keos back in, 40. He's up at the top, but here's Stabler.
Double cutters coming through. Well defended. Kameski shoots, save, rebound. That's six saves now for Sam Fish. Penn comes back up with it and they get hit. Kameski gets it over for Hunter. Hunter with the moves and scores. What an awesome shot and play by Chloe Hunter to get one back for Penn. A little confusion by Princeton defensively coming out of that little scrum with Sears. Hunter found herself wide open. Great job by Penn finding Hunter and then full steam ahead. No, I mean, no one's marking her by the time they slid to her. Super quick. It's a great job getting underneath there. You said it full steam ahead and then charging hard and then firing back to the left side, getting the fish out of position there and Hunter with her 12th of the season. They needed that. And the junior out of Houston, Texas. Saying hello to her mom. Love that. Under seven to play in the third. Stout for Princeton. Moon for Penn. Good play, Stout able to go over there and gather it up. Good, good job by Stout turning back around. She kind of saw Penn had done a great job of shifting to that sideline, didn't want to get caught there again. Good decision turning back towards the middle there. And it's five nothing draw controls this quarter in favor of Princeton. That's the thing, if you're Penn, you gotta try to break that up at some point, right? I mean, that's what they did early and they were successful in scoring a couple early to start this game, three to one lead. But it's since turned to Princeton in favor of them now at the draw controls here, Sears. Ellen O'Callaghan just really having an incredible game against Sears, but Sophie Davis with the check to the head is gonna get the yellow card here, so Penn will be Player down now for two minutes. First card of the game, Davis, sophomore, defensive player for Penn. Player advantage here for Princeton. They've got to reset that shot clock to 90 seconds. Sears have this year for Princeton. So, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, great. I need your 90. That's okay. Thank you. Okay. Making sure they had the right number with that card and resetting that shot clock to 90 after the yellow card. And Sears backs it out. Yeah, when your player up. Even though she had a free position there, you know, when, when you when you have that opportunity to be player up, it's a great it's a great scoring opportunity. It's gonna take time off the clock. Yeah. They can really work that pen D. And now they can't face guard Molum, you know, when you're player down. So that changes their whole scheme of trying to minimize. Where's she at? Far side. Instead it goes in front and a shot off the post that time from Whiteway. Good look there by Princeton. Nice clear. Yeah, excellent outlet to Ellen O'Callaghan that time from Kowalski and goal. Yeah, and sometimes when your player down, it can get the other team caught in transition. You don't have to play, you know, against those double teams. You can catch them before they have numbers there. What do we have here? going against Penn. Going to turn it back over to Princeton. So if you could figure out what they had just called there because that really would have been an opportunity for Penn. Player down still here for another 50 seconds. Yeah, they could have killed that penalty. Yeah. 
But now Princeton's got another opportunity. They still got plenty of time. Offside, excuse me, Rachel. Offsides against Penn. A little bit too zealous maybe on that fast yeah. break I was talking about. There she is. Full hand back behind the net with a pass. You know, when you're player up, you want to spread out that D, not clog in the middle, because when you know they're, they're able to play two players and coming up with a huge turnover here. Yeah, it looked a little compact there, didn't it? Yeah, the pe Princeton's got to spread out that pen D, make them make the slides long, use the space that they have with the extra player. Gomeski almost got her stick check from behind. Instead, they get it over midfield. Good clear. O'Callaghan. All right, it's a nice job here for Penn, right? They, they don't give up a goal, the player advantage. Yeah, Ward, absolutely. Ward off the two minutes. Chance to cut it to two. They've got one timeout remaining here for the game. Princeton has all three. Three and a half left in the third. Brandt got a step, they go behind the net, and then they get it back on the cutter, and they shoot, and they score. Nice job there by Penn with the ball movement, taking it behind, and then just catching that cutter off the screen. Bella Kehoe with the finish. Another assisted goal for Penn, their second in a row. And it looks like Princeton wants a timeout here. Talk about it. So Hunter and then Keo, Bella Keo on the latest goal here for Penn. It's a two goal game. Three minutes and 25 seconds to play in the third. And this team's gritty here, right? Four and eight on the season, one and three in the Ivy. Not indicative of what we're seeing here tonight. Yeah, and I think, you know, that, that was a message, you know, when you talk to, to people in, in the game and who've watched and it said, don't be fooled by Penn's record. Yes, they're, you know, four and eight, but they are better than their record. And we're, we're seeing it here tonight. What about headlines here this week, week 10? We just mentioned it, Duke knocking off Boston College over this past weekend. That's ties their best start since 2006. What else kind of jumped out yeah, at you? Yeah, they've got a big, big week now taking on UNC. Livy Rosenzweig from Loyola setting the Patriot League record. Yale, I mean, in the Ivy top of Cornell, first ever spot in the Ivy League tournament. And the first time they beat Cornell in almost 20 years. So, they, you know, we talked about at the top, they're having a great season, undefeated in the Ivy League. Yale with the loss against UConn today, 20 to 14. UConn also having a great season. Sydney Watson is so fun to watch. We've had this discussion a little bit throughout the season so far because of COVID and players getting the year back and who decides to return and, you know, what that does uh, to teams and also the competition level that we've been seeing over the last couple of years. Pretty incredible, right? And not to mention the transfer portal that has oh, yeah. gone wild in the last few years. COVID sort of compounding that. Yeah, I mean, rosters look so different, you know, since pre-COVID year over year. So many players in the transfer portal switching teams and... You know, it, it's done a lot, you know, for parity in some ways, and then in other ways, it's just given really stacked teams even more talent. Yeah. Here at Sherrod Field, class of 1952 Stadium in Princeton, New Jersey tonight. This Wednesday evening. Sam Fish, goalkeeper for the Tigers. The San Diego, California. Coach Saylor was telling us they went out there for spring break this year. They Remember did. That? They played yeah, San Diego State, played USC. They went to the zoo. They did a beach bonfire. Really, you know, we just talked about coming off of COVID. Just a nice team trip. Uh, had a lot of fans and fans and family out there. Spent a whole week on the West Coast. Yeah, Fisher's family living out there in San Diego helped out. Just had the bonfire on the beach with some s'mores and really enjoying the time out there. You said it every uh, four years, right? Every athletic program, they go on a, a trip. Now, tell us about that. Generally, yeah, you, you know, there's a trip that happens during your time at Princeton. Uh, and obviously with this this group, COVID changed those plans. So they made the trip out west. 
Princeton's gone to Australia, South Africa. Really some incredible trips this, this program has taken. And then you, uh, unfortunately, back when you were playing the, the unfortunate events of September 11th, and that canceled that one that year. Yeah, we were headed to Australia, unfortunately. Obviously, all international travel was canceled. Um, didn't get to make that trip, but. Oh, what a rocket shot from Chloe Hunter, who scores for Penn. She's got two of the last three goals. It is a one goal game. Yeah, Chloe Hunter coming off that screen so quick with her footwork and really just beats her defender one on one, gets a step. They overloaded, overloaded that one side, so there's not really a whole lot of places. Marge tried to get the slide there, but just was she's just too high above the, you know, obviously above the challenge, so it was hard to slide down. You can see her sort of turn it on there. It was like slow, 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 and then right. she just took off. Stadler sending that pick there for Penn, number five. Huge part of the play. And Chloe Hunter with her second goal tonight. Her 13th of the year has made it a one goal game, 2.47 remaining. It's a 3 nothing run here in the last four minutes and six seconds. Yeah, huge draw control here. Penn come, has come up with the last few and been able to finish. You see Marge Donovan is the only one in the circle. Everybody else is backing up and kind of running towards. But Moon just is, takes it herself. Big win for Penn. But a bad pass there. And scooped up by Princeton. They didn't need that. Mary Murphy has it. I mean, that's two goals in a row after holding Princeton scoreless on the player advantage. So really nice sequence over the last few minutes here. Yeah, certainly momentum in Penn's favor right now. Yeah, two out of the three losses by Penn in conference have been by one goal. So they've been in some close ones. They've also had two other losses this year by two goals. So they're right into here again tonight. It's been a little bit of a drought for Princeton, over seven minutes, and they've only taken two shots. But this one in front, from point blank range, scored by Mackenzie Blake. That's the way to get it back if you're the Tigers. Yeah, great ball movement, another assisted goal by the Tigers. You see here, just Mackenzie Blake finds herself wide open, and a nice job taking that one second. You know, sometimes when you're that close up, you just turn and shoot, but really great poise. Just throw that one fake in with the goalie and go right around her. For sure, because you recognize you're there one-on-one. -on -one. You have time, you have a split second. And that gives them a chance to look and see where the goalie is and where they can react. So a nice fake there for the goalie. Yeah, oftentimes you, when you know you're one on the goalie, people sort of just get rid of it because they, they think people are coming. But Mackenzie Blake, just incredible poise for a freshman, taking her time, just throwing that one quick fake in there. As soon as we set it, the drought, and then Princeton says, I got gotcha. you. We'll come right back and get one here to make it a two goal game. It's a huge goal by Princeton. Yeah. Obviously, Penn with the momentum and the three-goal run. They hit there. Stayed with it. Marge Donovan. Donovan. Oh, what a pass in front. Blake. And a save made. Great save by Kowalski there. A great leading pass by Marge Donovan off the draw. A good shot by Mackenzie Blake, but just a huge save. Sam DeVito with a takeaway. She gets taken down. They're gonna stop the clock here. We'll see. They wanna bring her back. Yeah, a, gr a great leading pass. A great fake there by Blake, but Kowalski with the kick save. For delay of game, one minute. So we see a green card for delay a game after that foul. Lynn Bowers, Hall of Fame referee. The clock keeps running. 
And after and so if you if you take too much time, remove the ball or slow the clock down or still slow the game down, they will get you for a green card, and that's exactly what happened. Yeah, so Sophie Davis has to sit here. Player advantage. Second time for Princeton here today. Didn't score the first time, didn't take any shots. Yeah, and they've got to spread this pen D out. Last time, Penn was able to kind of sag into the middle and clock up that space. About an eight second differential between the game clock here and the player advantage. The shot clock is off. They can hold for the final shot. And the player up here for 22 more seconds. Ball loose. Recovered. Great job by Penn there, disrupting the play. It's a risky move player down, but a, a well taken risk by Comiskey. Almost came up with it there. Ball hand pass it, back up top Montez. Shut down, 10 seconds to go. Barry, eight seconds. Penn's back in full strength. Ball's knocked out of the stick of Sears. And what a job by Penn. Incredible defensive stand there by Penn. Player down. Time winding down in that quarter and just nothing doing for Princeton. Penn shutting down every opportunity Princeton tried to take there. And Kowalski, who stepped in midway through the second quarter in goal for Penn. And the Quakers battling here tonight, trying to pull off this upset in the 54th meeting of all time between these two Ivy League rivals. Start of the fourth quarter from Princeton, New Jersey when we return after this. Old Spice College Lacrosse is brought to you by Old Spice. Smell ready for anything. 12 to 10 as we get set for the fourth quarter tonight from Princeton. Sun set in here in New Jersey in this Ivy League matchup. Princeton trying to go undefeated at 4-0 in the conference. Penn needs this win to go to 2-3, and three, trying to inch their way up into that top four position. The top four make the Ivy League tournament. Princeton, the champions of 2019, Penn, the champions of 2018. Mike Corey here alongside with Tawartan Trophy winner and two-time national champion from Princeton, Rachel DiCecco. All right, fourth quarter. And uh, how about it? There was two penalties by Penn. They were able to not allow Princeton. I, I don't think they even had any real shots opportunities. Oh, yeah, three minutes of player down. Not a shot. Not a and, shot. Which is a real real testament to Penn's defense and just speaks to how well they're playing tonight. And really not being rattled. I mean, and there's been runs here by Princeton in this game. Five goal run, a three goal run, and a two goal run. Largest run that Penn has had has been three goals. I got him within one in this third quarter. Then Mackenzie Blake came back with a goal to put him up 12-10. They get the draw control here. Fourth quarter's underway. Sears has it. She's being hounded. How did she hold on to that ball? Yeah, I know. Just great. Great control there. No foul. She just slipped, but still able to hold on to it. 14 to 12. Draw controls in favor of the Tigers here. This ball is loose. Oh, chasing after it and picking it up is Mary Murphy. Nice work. talked about earlier, Rachel. Well, here we go, up front. Ball knocked away, and Penn has it with Brandt. At the amount of different scorers and athletic players for this Princeton team, and it, I think it's been that collective group of defense that Penn has said, yeah, okay, they've been beat a couple of times, but I don't know, they just kind of seemed like they've stood their ground. Yeah, they've locked in a little bit. You know, obviously, Mulhan's having a huge night, but they have locked in against Sears, against Montez. And I think the sun might be playing a little bit of a factor here. We've seen two plays back to back where players just missed it. And I think the sun might be in their eyes a little bit as we see it setting over the field. 15 turnovers for Penn in this game. There are eight for Princeton. That was a key coming in that you said Princeton averages just under 12. Penn averages over 17. Yeah, and you can see what those numbers are just tracking. They're tracking basically towards their averages for this year. Yep. I mean, that would be just one thing. I mean, if you're Penn and you could focus on trying to cut that down by three or four, 
You know, every game Montez shoots. Oh, save made Kowalski. Big time play. As Montez gets rid of it fast. That is eight saves now. Combination for Penn goalkeepers tonight. Here they come on the run. Goriari in. She had Hunter for one second there. It looked like she might pass, but Princeton able to recover. Yeah, absolutely huge save by Kowalski against that rocket by Montez. Yeah, we talked about how that would be, you know, when they took uh, Van Hosen out and goal. Kelly Van Hosen that got the start tonight. And now Chrissy Kowalski from midway through the second quarter has stood strong throughout here. Now Penn, bouncer, score it, Maria Themelis, who gets back into the act. Maria Themelis is fourth of the night. Another great take. We'll see here this challenge by Montez. Great high save. Coming up, O'Callaghan with that ground ball, and then Thamelis on the other other end. Just a quick switch of the hands. Able to go underneath. Feels that pressure coming, and then goes back to the right. Nice bounce shot there by Thamelis. Penn on a 4-1 run right now. Well, Thamelis, as we showed you earlier, came into this game. She's played in six games prior to tonight with eight goals and three assists, and she has four goals here on four shots and has also won five draw controls, too. So what a night uh, for her. Yeah, absolutely having a great night across the board. You know, four for four doesn't get any better than that. And contributing on the draw circle, obviously, Moon is dominant, but getting those 50-50s you see here are about to get another one. Still battling. Moon's got it. Oh, the pass trying to find Goriari, and he does pick it back up. Madison Geronic is 20. Now Nikki Miles. Haven't heard too much from her tonight. 23 for Penn. Yeah, their leading score going into this game, but having a quiet evening. Hunter now has got March on him, a little bit isolated. What do we got here? Hunter, whistle on Princeton. Nice hard take by Hunter. Right there. Yep. Who gets the head area, yeah, from behind. She started to fall before she challenged, and then you see Philippi there come across her face, knock her goggles off. And she didn't need to do that. I mean, she Hunter was kind of already off, off balance, but you know, obviously anytime you make contact with the face, it's gonna be a foul. Hunter with a rocket shot that is saved by Sam Fish. Uh, Fish, I mean, good job being ready for that one. I mean, Hunter, the whistle blew, and half a yeah. second later, she rips that shot. Which now, is a little surprising from her because she's so quick on her feet. She could have, you know, run in there, but really good job there by Fish. And really had a good angle, too. So you, you thought, hey, this is maybe the opportunity to do that, right? Yep. Nice job there by Fish. And Princeton's got to just kind of get under control here, offensively take their time. And Chloe Hunter has been on a tear, too. She had two of three goals in that sequence. There was a three-goal run by Penn to cut it to one. And Mackenzie Blake came back with one for Princeton. Now Thamelis had just scored for Penn, so we're back to a one-goal game. Yeah, I don't know if anybody really has quite the uh, the windup and the score is like a Charlotte no, North. Know, but I've that. seen other players with that yeah. windup now, and I, I think it's interesting to watch that kind of catch on because you know Charlotte does make it look easy, but that's that's not an easy shot to make no. just right off the eight meter. And she's got such speed, too, that, you know, she should be able to take it in like that. Now get a whistle here. And it's going to be, a, a, it's going to be, oh, I thought she was going to get her on a card for a check to the face. Yeah, and Thamelis, too. Good pursuit, though, by Thamelis. I love that aggressive play. She almost came up with it, but just she obviously can't check, stick towards the face. Sears on the spin, shooting high over the top of the net. 
Backed up well here by the Tigers. We're going to back in. Shot clock. Keep an eye on that. And this one sails wide as well. Five to shoot. Yeah, they got to hurry here. They've had a hard time when the shot clock's been running down and getting something off. Oh, the rebound. Is that in time? Let's see. Princeton saying yes. The shot clock had expired. They were kind of trying to get a couple of one-timers in there. This is when you wish we had instant replay, right? right? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, let's, let's go to the replay. Yes, but that's a tough that, one. There is none. So what do our officials say here? It's going to be a goal for Princeton. Wow. Do the stick check. That is huge. And we can't see the shot clock here, but... Just flicked it in like a little field hockey move there by Kyla Sears. That's Sears, yes. Now, let's see if we can kind of pan out maybe and get. Shot clock is right out. Bottom of your screen. Oh, oh it's tight. It's... That wow. is tough. That's a and that huge is play. That is a huge play. And that's bang, bang right there. Shot clock, you can see. Down to zero. Did she get it off in time? It is a questionable one, but I wouldn't want to be on the field trying to make that call in real time. I mean, right? the, the game so moved difficult. so quickly, right? Obviously, yeah. there's no instant replay to, to double check. That is a tough call. Well, maybe Coach Saylor thinking back to that earlier play when the uh, ball was definitely saved, we felt like, by the uh, Penn goalkeeper, and then they called a shot clock violation. They had gotten the ball back, so that could have been a, a complete two-goal swing, if you will, because Penn had gotten the ball back, and they had a chance to score. They did not. But now on this one. Lillian Stout, I think they sent her off. She was bleeding her finger, so they sent her off the field, and they got to switch it up on the draw now. And so it's going to be Sophie Whiteway for Princeton. Ken and Moon once again for Penn. Still a ton of time left in this game. 10-01 remaining. Kyla Sears has got it. She's got three goals today on nine shots. That was just tough because that was on the cleanup. But I mean, if there's two players, maybe three we've seen tonight, there was Montez who just had it, you know. It's hard to focus on all of them, but you, you certainly can't let Kate Mulham get going. She's got five already tonight. Yeah, but you see Penn continuing to face card her, really trying to pull her out of this game. She's had such, such success in the 1v1 challenges. But it does force Princeton to move the ball a little bit differently. You see Mulham pulling herself out to make them kind of go 5v5. Sears has it. Gets a step. Good job there on that slide. Coming over for Penn, but gets it back now up to the top. Shooting and scoring is Whiteway. Selfie Whiteway. Creates a little more separation for the Tigers. They're up three. Really nice job there by Sears, not forcing the shot. She drew all that, all that contact, pulled it out, which allowed Sophie Whiteway to challenge while the, why the D was readjusting. See, she, you know, she called for it, I got you, passes it. Whiteside goes hard as the slides try and readjust. Nice bounce shot. I love the amount of bounce shots I'm seeing tonight. It's just a, it's a great shot, a great option. You don't always have to rip it hard and high. And they're you know, doing a nice job, both teams, with the bounce shots tonight. Yeah, placement, so key. Whiteway does it. 13th of the year, but you know, even back to Sears, who you mentioned too, she leads the team in both scoring and assists for the reasons that you just explained. Knows how to get her teammates involved because she's going to draw that defensive attention. Absolutely, she draws a lot of attention when she has the ball, and it was a smart play by her using that to their advantage. Two goals in 58 seconds. After it was a one goal game, 12 to 11. 
And Whiteway's back to draw control. Let's see. Kaminsky had it for the moment, number nine for Penn, but got knocked out of her stick. And now Princeton controls it. They're in a really good spot here with a three goal lead and possession. And then you get, you know, Penn trying to go after you a little bit more, maybe trying to draw some contact and get a penalty. There have been two penalties on Penn in this game tonight. Princeton is over two though. Shots plus 10 to the Tigers. Yeah, and even more so now, I think you're gonna see Princeton take their time. Up three with just over eight minutes left. Using the clock to their advantage. Montez. Pass in front. Oh, getting hit up by the head area, I think. Yep, that time is Mackenzie Blake got it down low. Got hit. This is key now. Could tie their largest lead of the afternoon at four. Blake. Great angle for that lefty. She wants it, it's off the post. Off the post. Great shot there by Blake. Just a few inches to the left and that goes in. Yeah, wasn't it perfect positioning there uh, where she wanted that for the, you're right, for her style and being a lefty. Yep. Penn so far with only two fourth quarter shots here. And still only down three, which is remarkable yeah. with just two shots and they've, you know, their turnovers this half have been costly for them. The last two have been critical from Princeton. The rebound scores, the shot clock was winding down by Sears and then Whiteway. Princeton back in the zone D. On the cut, in front, shooting and scoring. That was pretty. Madison Geronic. Nice job there by Madison Geronic attacking from behind. She came across and the slides were just late. I mean, she did a nice job of getting her hands free, but with a zone that should be way more clogged up than that, just came a little bit late. And then this nice shot placement, we side high against Fish. They've had a couple of nice ones like that coming from X, whether it's a player themselves or cutting from behind and getting a feed. And Penn is within two. We still have 7.07 remaining in this one. Two goal lead for the Tigers with 7.07 remaining in the fourth quarter here. Don't miss out on Friday night. ESPN and ABC, three NBA playoff games for you. And we're going to start off at 7, the Heat and the Hawks, 8.30 on ABC, Bucks and Bulls, and then at 9.30 over on ESPN, Suns and Pelicans. The NBA playoffs on ESPN and ABC. Karen Corbett is in her 23rd season at Penn. Talked about how amazing they have been from 07 to 18. They won 11 of 12 Ivy League championships with the 13 straight NCAA tournaments. Got this team battling here tonight. Yeah, Karen... An incredible coach at Penn has had a, has an amazing career there. As you see, 13 straight NCAA appearances. Coach for a, about a year and a half here with Chris Saylor. So much mutual respect between these two coaches. Really legends in the Ivy League. You know, Penn is not Penn is not going away easily. You know, Princeton's been up three a couple times, had a chance to, to try and run away with it, and Penn just continuing to fight and keep themselves. You know, two goals in seven minutes is, is very doable. Plenty of time here. Yes, the resolve has been outstanding, but this is going to be Princeton possession here, thanks to Sophie Whiteway. It's all the infraction on Moon of the draw control, 16 to 14 now. Princeton leads that category tonight by two. And Coach Corbett talked about, when we talked about the Penn culture, like they are gritty, they want to fight. And this is exactly, you know, she's got to be proud of that. Win or lose tonight, you know, they're having a difficult year. They, they have been down a couple goals and they have not given up. They have stayed in this. And a game like this, a lot of times for a team can, can kind of change your whole season, just kind of believing in yourself and knowing that you can, can claw back. 
uh, when you're down. Uh, definitely, you've seen it. You've seen it against good teams that you know all of a sudden get that lead and then it balloons up to five, six, and then you're you're definitely out of it. But that's a great point by you that multiple times tonight, Penn has continued to come back. The largest lead of the game has been four by Princeton. We're at two right now. We're coming up on six minutes remaining. DeVito up top, Montez. A lot of space for Montez on that right side. You called it, she shoots, and the save is made by Kowalski. Yeah, great look, great save. The 10th save for Penn goalies here tonight. You know, and if I, you know, the game's not over, but if I'm Coach Corbett, I'm, you know, Kowalski for me has been the stronger of the two by far tonight. From what we've seen, yes. Maybe, you know, not getting the start kind of fired her up. She said, I'm going to prove why I should start. I mean, that kind of can go one of two ways, and Kowalski has, has stepped up in that way. She's got eight of the ten saves for Penn. Giving up nine goals since she's come in. That was midway through the second quarter. On our way down to five minutes remaining in this one tonight. Penn needs one here to really make it interesting. Stabler feeds it in front. There it is, a shot to score. It's Brandt, Anna Brandt. Her third tonight. Yeah, it started at the other end with a huge save by Kowalski. Get a chance to see it again here. Penn coming up with that rebound. Just good patience on that possession by Penn. Didn't force it. Caught Princeton in the screen there on the switch. Anna Brandt, they took their time to set that up. You see there, coming off the screen, Anna Brandt, stick free, able to finish. That was special. You saw it right from the beginning with a save by Kowalski. The ball was scooped up by Grace Fujinaga. And then the assist from Stadler to Anna Brandt for her 19th and it's a one goal game. Princeton has won the last five here. Including the Ivy League Championship, 13 and nine back in 2019 against this Penn team. Yeah, I mean, this, this series has been a battle. You see 28 to 22 overall, but Princeton with the, with the recent advantage. So certainly a good one we've got tonight here. Not over by any means. Just one goal with five minutes left. And we've seen a big difference in these halves. In the first half of the 14 goals, there was only one assist. And now in the second half, six assists on 13 goals. A great adjustment, adjustment by both teams. Try and create more offensively off of those passes as opposed to just going down, you know, challenges one-on-one. -on -one. Seen so many good things from both teams here tonight. Sam Fish in goal for Princeton. Chrissy Kowalski. And leaving Kelly Van Hosen and goal for Penn. So many different players have gotten involved. The leading scorer is Kate Mulham. She's got five goals in this game. And Madison geronic has got four for Penn. There's Fish, number 12 for Princeton. Senior out of San Diego. She's got one more year to go, too, by the way. And that's the thing now when you look at all these rosters and you see junior, senior, you really have to ask, you know, because we don't yeah, know. Yeah, but, Pen, but, you know, but the Ivies came down with that ruling. They're not allowing athletes to play their fifth year at the Ivies. So it's so difficult for right. these kids watching everybody else do it. And now if they want to take that last year, it's got to be somewhere else. Penn second half shooting, six of nine, 67%. Here we go, 5.02 remaining. One goal game here tonight in this Ivy League battle. Last tie we had was 3-3 back at 2:04 left in the first quarter. How about that? Looking like a Yale Bulldog there, yeah. but an orange, uh, Princeton orange there. <laughs> Big guy. You know, and it's interesting. So Stat was on the draw. She had to come off because she had blood on her finger, and and Sophie Whiteway took it, and they've kept her in there. She's having some success. White Way and Moon. Number eight, White Way for Princeton. And then Moon for Penn. 
Another infraction here. Three in a row. Princeton possession. You know, sometimes what Moon is so quick off that draw, but if you go too soon, you're going to get dinged on it, and sometimes you got to balance, you know, winning some of them and then getting that call occasionally. Not, not the best time for that right. foul. Right, I was just going to say, exactly, especially this late. You know, and that's how big your teammates are in the wing play, you know, to be able to try to come up with those. But you don't give your team a chance if you're called for the infraction from the start. Here's Montez. Looks like they're trying to get Mulham in here. Princeton waiting to get Kate Mulham in. Obviously been so successful tonight. You'll see they'll go right back to that face guard. She's cutting through the middle. Ball goes back out to Montez. 30 seconds to shoot. Under four to go in the game. Look out, Sears. She had space on her right, opted to try and go back to her left, but a nice job there by Pendy. Yeah, that was Ellen O'Callaghan that time, number 30. Clock winding down here on this possession to shoot. Ten seconds left. And really, you've got to start before, you know, this time winds down because you need time to get the play started. And Princeton's just not been able to do that. Down in front, Blake. Shot saves, going to reset the shot clock. If Princeton's able to come back up with it, they got it. They got 60 seconds again. You know, they got that shot off just in time, Blake did. And obviously resets with the goalie save. Kind of take this down to about the two and a half minute mark, but that's still a lot of time, right? I mean, you can't just use clock here. You gotta be effective trying to make a play and get a good shot. Yeah, I mean, two and a half minutes is plenty of time to score. Right. You know, Princeton working to come away with that second, that two goal lead will be a little bit more difficult with less than three left, but Penn doing such a nice job shutting down Princeton offensively. All over Takas that time, number 19 for Princeton. Now here's Sears. Sears. Whistle with 11 seconds on the shot clock here. And if you're a pen, this is not who you want at the eight meter here. Two of her goals tonight are off the eight meter. It's it back to Sears now. They've had four free position goals here tonight. That one is off to the right. And it's recovered by Penn. They go back to Kowalski in goal. She swings it out and finds Fujinaga. Ball was loose and off of the stick of O'Callaghan, and Princeton has it. Such an unfortunate turnover for Penn there. Just an errant pass. They, just, they did so much work to get that ball back. Such a great job by their D. Really tough one there. And now Princeton can really take it down to almost 20, 25 seconds here. It's about 28 seconds. They wind down this entire shot clock. And the turnovers tonight for Penn, yep. just so costly. No more, no, none more costly than that one just then. It's their 16th of the night. About 38 seconds, actually, they could take it down to. Clearly, I wasn't a math major at Princeton. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. It's like, I'm usually really good at math. I should have had that right on the first try. And then they're clearing space for Montez again. She's pulling left. They're going to wait a little longer. They... Here's Sears. Montez, 20 to shoot. They've got, yeah, they got, sorry, Mike. They've got to start moving. They've been waiting too much and then just trying to force with 15. They've got to start some ball movement. Takis shoots, she scores! You said it, they delivered with 47.4 remaining. Princeton is back up two. Great use of the shot clock there by Princeton. Takis taking her left, switching back, roll dodge right. Nice job. Just got that step on her defender with the roll dodge. Second leading score on this team 
and give her this opportunity and she converts. Yeah, and we talk about when you talk defensively stepping up, when somebody roll dodges like that, you've got to step up the field, not flat. It gave Talkas that momentum and that just that one step she needed to get that righty shot off. That was the first goal in eight minutes and 16 seconds for Princeton. We've got another goalie change. Yeah, they go back to Kelly Van Hosen. Good pickup there for Penn. Just, just 47 seconds left, a goalie change. Not sure what the uh, reason for that is, but Penn's got it. They only have 38 seconds to work with here. Big hit. Look out. It's going to be a card. Yes. Against. Why do that? Yeah, it's not, it's not, not obviously intentional, but not a super heads up play there. Now their player. Illegal dangerous check, two minutes. Illegal dangerous check, two minutes. Sears comes flying in. Totally unnecessary at yeah. this point of the game. Now their player down with 35 seconds left. Clock stops. First player advantage for the game for Penn here today. They got 35.1 on the clock. And a timeout. Now they get an opportunity here, Rachel. I mean, you, you have the player advantage. You got to move quickly, obviously. Yeah, they want to work qu quickly here with that player advantage, move the ball quickly, get a quick score. Obviously, it's releasable, so they'll be even up if they score. But, you know, they want, they want if at best, maybe 20, 28. Can they score in 10 seconds, 25 seconds to work with off the draw? All right, who do you want to see have it here? I mean, Thamelis has four goals. Uh, who else? I Brand. think I'm going to clear space for Chloe Hunter and let her take it to goal. Okay. It'll be, it'll be quick, um, effective if they're able to make that happen. Princeton's had a hard time stopping her momentum tonight. But, I mean, Thamelis is having a great night, as you said, Brandt, too. So a couple good options here for Penn. Well, and then what do you know about Coach Saylor and, and what they want to try to do maybe defensively on this possession? I mean, you want to tie them up, slow them down as much as you can. I think coming off this whistle, we're probably going to see a double team here. Anything to try and not allow them to take that momentum into the goal. And get right into that set. Exactly. Absolutely. Yep. Princeton. Tries to go to nine and three and would be undefeated at four and oh in the Ivy. Penn, their season on the line here. They need to win this game tonight. They're one and three in the conference. Only the top four teams make it to the Ivy League tournament. This has been big. They have been battling throughout. They've worked their way back numerous times, but they have just 35.1 seconds remaining here in this one. There is Sears with a penalty. Yeah, she Triple team here by Princeton as expected. They want them to go have to go backwards first, but they've got to be careful because Chloe Hunter is right there. There was a sequence today in which Penn scored two goals in 38 seconds. You have to do it slightly quicker here. Here we go. Yeah, so you, you see Princeton wanting them to go backwards. We'll see if she risks going over to Chloe. She does. Now Princeton sagging in a little bit, protecting that eight, almost like a prevent defense in football. They don't want to come out and give them that space to to go in. Let's see if they go back to Hunter as you talked about. She's up at the top, 21. She's got it. Here she is. Trying to cut through, feeds it in front. Oh, what a shot there on the way by Anna Brandt. A little nifty, but couldn't go. Rebound, the shot in front by Thamelis. And in the crease. In the crease, and that, that'll do it. Fish should just hold on to the ball here. She's got the 10 seconds. Good opportunity by Penn, a couple good opportunities. It's over, and Princeton wins it. 15 to 13 in the 54th meeting between these two Ivy League rivals. With this win, Princeton clinches a spot in the Ivy League tournament. Huge for them, the second team now to have clinched a spot. Time now to take a look at who was ready for anything tonight. Brought to you by Old Spice. How about Kate Mulham? Certainly. Five goals out of Kate Mulham tonight off of 10 shots. Needed to be face guarded in that second half to be stopped. Just huge play out of her tonight. Has stepped up when her team needed her. Tying her season high five goals. Well, number 12, Princeton gets it done. They are now nine and three on the season and four and zero in the Ivy League. When she a spot in the Ivy League tournament. Coming up, fun one today.
from Princeton, New Jersey. 15-13 the final. We thank you for watching. For Rachel DiCecco, Mike Corey saying so long. And thanks for being with us. Congrats to the Tigers tonight. Winners at home. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, everyone.